Hey, Jim. How are you hey, doing? Roy. Good, good. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Um, yeah, hey, well, you know, I saw this video recently uh, from Juniper Networks, and I thought maybe we could jointly take a look at it and um, and maybe, you know, chat a little bit about, about it. Um, I think uh, Kevin Landry over at Juniper has done a good job of uh, bringing a very uh, personal element um, to something, to a topic that's sometimes esoteric for a lot of people, like service assurance. And he's um, he's brought in a, an upcoming musician, um, Graven, from Canada, into his conversation around service assurance. And um, I was quite impressed at uh, how he tied it all together as a topic. So right. let's take a look. Yeah, yeah, let's take a look. You know, sometimes you get the opportunity to mix business and pleasure. And today, I'm delighted to be talking with singer-songwriter Maddie McKechnie, known as Graven. In my opinion, he's got the best job in the world. Although I love my job, who wouldn't want to be networking? It was still a surprise to realize that we had a lot in common, a lot more than I could have imagined. So thanks for joining us. Hey, Kevin. After you told me about the Juniper Networks and their way of being authentic and making a meaningful difference, I felt there was a really great alignment in what we represent through social media and through Instagram live streams. I, I get it. I get it. So social media and live streaming are just one part of what our audience here and telecom networking operations enables because they're the ones who build out the internet and connect our applications through their networks. They're actually the ones who safeguard or should safeguard our end user experience across these networks so that things like live streaming just work without lags and interruption. Do you get that? Oh, all the time. It's actually pretty irritating sometimes when the live streams lock up. Many times I've had to restart the session and then I lose the... Uh, you know, I think we've all been there where um, you're trying to watch some live entertainment and everything's streaming nowadays, right? Whether it's Netflix or YouTube or uh, in, in my case, I love watching tennis and so it's tennis TV. It's also a streaming service and there's interruptions. And so the first thing we'll think of is, ah, it's on our side. There's not enough bandwidth. We have all been there. And you're right, you know, watching YouTube, watching, and in my case, you know, watching Netflix as well, or the family. And it stutters, so it stops, so it's not available, or the thing's a little spinning, going spinning. And we're sitting there and like, you know, what's the problem? And you're right, the first thing we automatically go through is like, maybe I don't have enough bandwidth. Maybe right. my service providers, right, not doing their thing, right? Right. But, you know, as, as network guys, we know that it's not that simple, right? That's right. We might think that's that right. it's just our internet connection that's, that's wrong, but um, where is that streaming service and how is it connected? And uh, there's so many links in that chain uh, that it, there, we know that it's not a simple solution. It might be. It might be just your local – your in-home Wi-Fi, but it could also be any a number of things that are causing the problem. That's correct. And I think, you know, I think that's where I think Kevin, you know, as we'll, as we'll hear more uh, through the video, I think Kevin will bring in the concept of assurance and the realization that it's not maybe the last mile, that there's so many steps between where we are at home, in our home offices, and the source of streaming media, or the source of our SaaS apps that we're using on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, whether it's email or other productivity tools, that that it's it's a long journey from here to there, right? Even though it happens to us in an instant. Right, right. Yep. Well, let's listen to more and let's see what else uh, Graven and Kevin have to say. Start complaining through the comments. You never know what will happen. Yeah, yeah. In general, it's a difficult problem for our audience to solve because more and more of their networks are becoming outside of the scope of their control band. And that's because they have to connect their services through third party partners and to cloud providers, right? I sure wish they could do their job better. I mean, I don't know anything about the work that your audience does, but I do know when the internet doesn't work for me, it means I can't play my music and reach my fans. And the Thursday night Graventown shows are literally the way I support my family. So it's extremely important to me that it works the way I need it to when I want it to. Well, the good news is that things are going to be getting better on that front. Our industry is faced with a lot of evolution in the way that our network 
expert audience here works. And that's what's going to allow them to be more creative. So that's actually why I wanted to speak with you today. This is where we connect. You see, processes in our telecom industry are becoming more agile and iterative, so the creativity is actually now happening at a more rapid pace. Network automation systems are continuously being developed, and this allows for more innovation and creative engineering initiatives that are going to help assure that the end outcome is those incredible customer experiences for end users like you. Okay, I'm going to pause here, and then maybe we can react. Yeah. So, you know, one of the key points Kevin, I think, made there was that there's more and more third parties involved in the equation, right? It's not it's not a simple uh, relationship between you and your network provider. That entertainment is coming from several different providers, likely to be in very dispersed geographies. Yeah, no, that's that is true. And Kevin does make a good point, which is it's no longer under the control or purview of a single entity, right? It's your last mile provider, whomever it is that you have for your last mile. And in this particular case, as Graven was pointing out, it's it's also his last mile provider, right? That that's actually doing the uplink of, of his concerts that he's streaming and and it's for him it's real. It's I mean, as he points out, if he can't do those concerts and his fans can't watch him, then he has trouble supporting his family. And so it's a real business problem for him. Um, it's not just entertainment, but it's a, it's actually a livelihood problem. And, and the reality is there are many providers, it's the, the multiple last miles, and then you have the cloud providers, you have the backbone providers. So there's multiple entities involved in getting the stream from where he is all the way over to you know, his fans, wherever they may be across the world. And right. that's that's the reality nowadays of most apps. Right? Yeah, certainly. And, and, and the reality of the, the market reality, you might say, is also that we don't have a lot of tolerance for for failures. Right. If the network, if the c customer experience is bad, people know it right away. Very quickly, the music becomes, you know, you, you can't listen to it if there's breaks and interruptions and pauses and mm -hmm. the, the screen freezes. It's a bad customer experience. And so um, that's a problem, not just for the artist, it's a problem as well for the local network provider. Even if it isn't their fault directly, the customer will think so. That's right, that's right. And to the extent that they can assure their network and provide better quality of service and better customer experience, um, you know, especially nowadays we have hopefully more last mile providers, right? It's not just cable, but it's also fiber. It's uh, it's also fixed wireless access or low earth orbit solutions. And so with more choices at hand, I think there is definitely value in assuring that last mile and assuring the end to end, obviously. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and sort of the, the customer experience, whether the service provider can be aware of that uh, in time to react, you know, knowing that the customer is experiencing a lot of uh, dropped packets and that's real, uh, being turned into a poor music experience, um, they need to know that and they need to let the customer know that they know that. Right, absolutely. I think proactive assurance, right? The, the ability to know it before your customer I think that's that, that goes a long way, right? If my provider told me at, at least and a little alert, it says, by the way, you know, we're experiencing some interruptions, uh, but we're looking into it. That makes me feel better than if I discover it. Right? So, exactly, exactly. So if, in you know, this case, the music is streaming from Canada, but if you're watching this in someplace in Europe, in the UK, for instance, and uh, suddenly it starts dropping frames, dropping packets, the experience starts going bad. And that might be on the transatlantic link that the problem um, has mm -hmm. manifested itself. Uh, the The local provider should perhaps be aware of that and let the customer know that, hey, um, we're experiencing problems on this link. Um, you know, this, the service should be back to normal. Right. No, agreed. I think the ability to troubleshoot and find root causes quickly is definitely one of the big um, one of the big things as part of overall assurance. Right. So 
let's continue. Let's continue. Yeah. 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 Lost their networks. So that you're not going to have all those annoying problems with the live streams in the future. <laughs> hey, that's all I want. It should just work so that I can do my thing and sing my songs. Right. And now I kind of see where this is going too. I, I see the similarity when it comes to the creative process. So I'm constantly testing out and trying things out before my songs take shape into their final form. Yeah, well, you hit upon something really important when you said constantly testing and trying things out. You see, when our networking expert audience here gets creative with innovating their new telecom service offerings, then many times they really don't know whether they're going to be encountering performance problems with lags and interruption, like you've been seeing, until their customers actually complain. And that's the big problem. We've conducted a study of 200 enterprise customers in the US that actually showed us that more than 60% of these problems are actually not being caught by the telecom network operators. And that's a big gap that our audience here might not have a solution for uh, to make sure that the end result is great quality service that we want. So the great news is that Juniper Networks has a solution to this problem called Paragon Active Assurance, and it allows the quality of our services to be tested from an end user perspective across the whole service delivery chain, whether they own the network, the traffic passes through or not. Yeah, so, you know, I, I think it is quite an innovative concept to be testing outside what is considered the traditional bounds of of the network of your network if you're if you're the local network operator right um to be mm -hmm. testing and putting that kind of visibility beyond your own perimeter as it were right right i think that's the new reality right which is that historically if you look at assurance there's, there's sort of two main categories that we used to do it and when i used to be in assurance anyway is the passive element where you do a lot of monitoring and telemetry gathering and you're trying to figure out what's going on and then the active assurance where you actually use uh, synthetic transactions and we call it synthetic, but the, the reality is you want it as real world as possible. Looks like a user doing web browsing, looks like a user that's actually streaming media, looks like a user that's downloading a big file or you know doing some kind of productivity um, suite uh, work. Um, and to be able to figure out from a transaction perspective, what's going on, breaking it down in terms of where the lags are, the delays are, where the packet losses are, um, that those kinds of transactions can be very helpful because it, it looks at things as close as possible from an end user perspective. And, and you're right, it's, yeah. you know, the service provider needs to go beyond the bounds of the network. Right? Yeah, I would say definitely, you know, more than just very helpful, I, I think it becomes essential eventually, right? Especially if it's a, a, a mass market event, um, you know, it's the FIFA World mm -hmm. Cup, something like that, you know that there's going to be millions of people watching that live stream. And if yep. you're the local network operator and you're not running those kind of uh, tests and, and proactive uh, assurance, wow. Um, uh, yeah, I think the, the tolerance for failure, as I said earlier, is going to be very, very thin. Uh, so, it yeah. It is. It is. People pay real money for these experiences. People pay real money for the apps that they're using. And so I agree with you. I mean, why would I pay a subscription fee if I'm getting lousy service all the time, right, on a monthly basis to whatever video service I'm watching? And, and, and yeah, I, I think, you know, it's interesting. Uh, most of the major networking vendors are now understanding the importance of assurance. And, and obviously, you know, Juniper, as Kevin pointed out, with uh, Paragon Active Assurance, um, is getting into the game as well. So not only do they try to sell network solutions, they have to assure the solutions because that's where their customers want to go next and have to go next. Um, so it's 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 right. definitely you know, much more important and essential than it used to be. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, the final thing I'll, I'll say about the Juniper video is that I think it's really interesting that they put it in human terms. Right. It's it's one yep. thing to talk about these yep. networking issues abstractly. Uh, it's another to see how it affects, you know, an individual artist. Yeah, no, I, I like the fact that, you know, Kevin's highlighting an up and coming you know, artist, you know, from Canada and who's actually trying to make a living, uh, support his livelihood through streaming, streaming media. And it's it's definitely 
it's emblematic of the world we live in today, and it shows the, the, the how essential network services and communication services are, and the assurance of those services. So, yeah, I like that uh, Kevin and Jennifer put that in human terms. I yeah, agree very with nice. That. It's a nice yeah. touch. Very yeah. nice touch. Yeah, well done. I hope to see more of these soon. Yeah, likewise.